Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us here today. I'm Dina Berggren, and I'd like to officially welcome you to the program. Joining me are my colleagues, Angie Lira, Denise Pranke, and Katie Pieper, and we are all members of the Walden Career Services team, and we are here to support you on career-related topics. We know that in recent months, many of you have had to adapt to rapid changes in your professional, personal, and academic lives, while also juggling increased responsibilities. Each individual has been impacted by COVID-19 in unique ways. Our hope is that this program gives you the tools and resources to manage work transitions during these challenging times, while also finding ways to cultivate well-being in yourself and in others. Our focus today will be on your immediate professional and personal needs and challenges. We will help you identify what you need to do right now and share job search and employment resources to manage your current situation. We'll also introduce six specific strategies to take control of your career and prepare for your next step. Finally, we will leave time for your questions. Angie will now launch a poll so we can learn a little bit more about you. Thank you, Dina. So as Dina mentioned, we're gonna start today with a little bit of a poll. Um, and our first question today is why did you decide to join the webinar today? And you can select all that apply. Um, were you laid off? Were your hours reduced? Did your job search just become much more complicated? Are you struggling with work from home? Um, have your job duties increased? Let us know why you decided uh, to join the webinar today. And I'll give you a few minutes to do that. All right, we got answers coming in. We'll give you just one more minute to complete this poll. Looks like people are still responding here. All right, it looks like most people have completed the poll, so I'm gonna go ahead um, and share your responses. So it looks like for most people, their job search just got more complicated, although we also have some folks that have been laid off, some uh, folks that have had their hours reduced, and some people who have had their job duties increased. Thank you so much for um, sharing your responses. Uh, now I'm going to hand it over to Katie, um, and she is going to lead us in our next, next topic. Thank you, Angie. The first step in coping with times of uncertainty is to identify where you are right now and what is most important to focus on. You may have noticed that others around you are all coping with COVID-19 in different ways. Some are worried about supplies and ensuring they have enough food, while others are taking additional time to focus on professional development. How can we explain the difference in priorities, and how does this inform us on manage managing a job search or career in 2020? This model, based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, demonstrates the way humans need to prioritize. Note that, the, that physical is the bottom and largest need. As you move up the pyramid, the sections become smaller. If the bottom needs are not met, we cannot focus on those above. This is evident today in how each of us copes with the COVID-19 situation. Each of us, depending on our situation, is focusing on a different area of the pyramid. This may also change day to day or even within a single day. Someone who has experienced the loss or reduction of a job may be concentrating on physical needs, trying to ensure that they and their family have housing, food, and other basic necessities. If they are in this situation, they may not be able to focus on other needs at that time. A person who has their physical needs met 
may be focused more on safety to ensure they and their family remain healthy. We understand that some of you may even be on the front lines of COVID-19, working diligently as you serve clients in healthcare and other settings. On the other hand, those whose safety needs have been met may be looking for belonging, love, and maintaining social connections to loved ones during a time of isolation. Social distancing has caused many of us to significantly lack in this area. As we move up the pyramid, some people may be able to focus on esteem by prioritizing self-care. At the very top of the pyramid is self-actualization. Those who find themselves with time and energy to learn and grow during this time may be gaining new skills and reflecting on their career aspirations. So why is this model important to our current situation? As you can see, depending on where you find yourself, you may have different priorities and needs than your friends, colleagues, and family members. And your priorities can change at any time. It's important to recognize where you are at right now and acknowledge that that is okay. In order to be able to focus on managing your career or finding a new position, you need to ensure that your immediate needs are met. Well-being is so important to manage before embarking on a career search. As I mentioned on the previous slide, you cannot pursue self-actualization if you lack in love and belonging. Reach out for support and connection and ensure you are taking care of your health and getting enough exercise. COVID-19 has drastically upset our daily routines. Finding a new one that works for you, regardless of how temporary it is, can help you stay in the career management or job search mindset. For many of you, you're also managing schedules for family members and children. Creating a routine can help maintain structure for everyone. In the last few months, we have all had to rely on technology more than ever becoming more comfortable with new platforms, such as Zoom or Teams, will ease some anxiety, allow more opportunities to connect with others, and also be a valuable skill for your resume and career. While technology can help with staying connected, it's also important to watch out for virtual burnout. Make sure you're taking some time away from computers and screens to avoid eye strain. Stay informed on what is happening in your state and local area as policies and plans are changing quickly. For information on government stimulus or financial information, keep up with irs.gov. If you are wondering about changes and trends for employment, a great place to check is the Bureau of Labor Statistics. While it is important to stay informed, it is also important to not overfocus on the news as well. One way to quickly get to the information you need is by visiting the Career Services website. To assist our students, alumni, and their families during this time, we have created a toolkit of resources related to COVID-19 that will be continuously updated. The toolkit is located on the Career Services homepage, as you can see in the image here. Next, we will take a look at what kinds of resources are located within this toolkit for you to use. Let's look deeper into what you can find. There are four sections in the toolkit with resources listed within each one. Managing the emotional impact of COVID-19 includes resources on mental health, coping, social isolation, and stress. Here you can find information about Walden's Student Assistance Program, which offers free 24-7 confidential support for stress, anxiety, or depression, family and personal conflicts, major life changes, grief and loss, financial and legal concerns, and other life challenges. If you are experiencing any of these issues, the Student Assistance Program can help. For more information, this area also includes articles on mental health topics and seeking therapy, including how to make the most of a virtual therapy session. 
The section on navigating employment uncertainty includes resources on job search, financial resources, as well as our top reads list with timely and updated articles on the job market and hiring trends. A great resource featured is findhelp.org, which you can use to locate resources within your geographical area. Whether you need help with childcare, food assistance, financial assistance, or work. This site puts your community resources at your fingertips when you need them the most. Virtual work, technology, and education includes resources on the transition to virtual work and how to make the most of virtual meetings. For those of you who are not currently working, having a solid knowledge of these platforms will be important for your job search especially as many interviews going forward could be scheduled using Skype or Zoom. Being comfortable with them can ease your anxiety during an already stressful interview. Additionally, there are tips for life balance in our new world. If you have concerns about managing your family while at home or protecting your loved ones, the section on individuals and families at home includes resources, on what K through 12 teachers want you to know, how you can support others, and how to manage if a family member is diagnosed with COVID-19. New information and policies are coming out every day, and this toolkit will be updated regularly to bring what is most important to our students. This toolkit, along with the resources on the Career Services website, can help you as you set career-related goals or prepare for a job search in 2020, which we will talk a little more about next. Before we do this, Angie will help us launch our next poll. Thanks, Katie. So before we get into talking a little bit about job search, we'd like to hear from you. So here are some career related areas. Which area do you need the most help with? Do you need the most help with goal setting, career research, resumes and cover letters, networking, or interviewing? I'll give you a couple minutes to complete this poll. So again, please select one of the following, goal setting, career research, resumes and cover letters, networking, or interviewing. Okay, just a couple more seconds here and I'm going to be closing the poll. So if you have not had a chance, let us know what career areas do you need the most help with. Okay, I'm going to close our poll here. So it looks like the majority of folks need help with career research, followed by interviewing and networking. So Hopefully, we're going to be able to cover some of these items for you and let you know what resources are available. Thanks for participating in our poll. Thanks, Angie. So whether you are unemployed, anticipating a layoff, or ready for a new position, as you think about your next career steps, includes these six strategies in your plan. Start by identifying your goals, research what is happening in the job market, update your resume, and now more than ever, it's important to strengthen your online presence. And even though most of us are physically apart, continue to find ways to connect with others. And finally, prepare for the interview process. Next, we're going to look at these six strategies in more detail. So before jumping into applying for positions, establish your priorities. Review your budget so you know when and where you stand financially, and be sure to check on your eligibility for unemployment if your employment status changes. Also, ask yourself what level of risk to the coronavirus you are willing to accept in a new job. For example, are you willing to go into an office or work face-to-face -face with others? Or are you planning to 
only accept a virtual position. This is something the vast majority of us have not had to consider before. Next, set SMART goals. Um, SMART goals are specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-specific. Use the SMART acronym to help you set goals to move forward and prioritize your next steps. I also want to add that if you need to take a job right now that is outside of your field to get by financially, future employers in your field are likely to understand that these are not ordinary times and respect you for your flexibility and initiative. And next, as we know, the current job market is very different from the job market earlier this year and it is likely to continue to shift quickly. Some industries, such as online retail and delivery, have grown, and others, such as tourism and hospitality, have been deeply disrupted. We have numerous articles and resources on the Career Services website in the COVID-19 toolkit, including a list of sites that specifically post virtual jobs. And there are also job search resources on the job and internship button. A few of the major sites are shown here. iGrad Job Search is where employers can post jobs specifically targeting Walden students. If you're seeking global jobs, check out Going Global. Um, both of these custom job search systems are available on the Career Services website. LinkedIn has been posting a list of who's hiring right now on members' homepages. If you are not on LinkedIn, we encourage you to sign up for a free LinkedIn account, create an up-to-date profile, and explore LinkedIn's job search features. Um, Flex, Flex Jobs is a popular site um, to search for remote and flexible jobs. Indeed is an aggregate job board that pulls jobs from multiple sites. In addition to searching by job title, you can search more broadly, such as by companies hiring or remote jobs. And Glassdoor is known for providing employee reviews of companies along with job postings. When you're doing your research, pay close attention to the qualifications for the job. You often don't have to meet 100% of the qualifications, but you want to meet the majority of what the employer is looking for. Also, for example, if you see that an online retail company is hiring, don't just think of the package handling positions. If a company is growing, they also need people in human resources, management, technology, supply chain logistics, and marketing, among others. Again, keep in mind that the job terrain is changing quickly, so it's important to do your research or you may miss opportunities that you haven't considered. Next, use the research you did looking at job descriptions to help you update your resume to showcase your qualifications and skills for your job target. Your resume should tell your professional story in a concise yet engaging way, one to three pages at the most. Include a brief professional summary, and in your experience section, use strong action verbs to describe your accomplishments and show results. If you've taken on additional responsibilities due to the pandemic, as some of you indicated in the poll, be sure to add how you've stepped up to meet the challenge and include your use of any new technologies. And keep in mind that both content and format are important on your resume. You want your document to have a professional, polished look, so make sure that your formatting is consistent throughout the document. Um, we have a number of resources on the Career Services website to help you. In the Optimal Resume System, we have over 400 sample resumes and CVs, as well as sample cover letters. You can sign up for a free Optimal Resume account and use one of the samples as a template if you like. We also have information on the Resumes and More tab 
and we have short videos in the 15-minute tutorial section to help you get started. And next, you want to strengthen your online presence. Update your LinkedIn profile, join LinkedIn groups related to your career interests, and share helpful information within the group. Always keep your communication professional. Google yourself to see what potential employers will see when they Google you. Also check your security settings on all of your social media platforms. I'll also add that when you are applying for positions, check your LinkedIn connections to see if you know anyone working at the company and let them know that you're going to be applying. And then next, even though this is a challenging time to connect with others, it's still important to do so. For example, perhaps consider helping others in your community by picking up groceries for an elderly neighbor or volunteering to help a nonprofit adjust to the use of virtual meeting technology or some other type of technology that you're familiar with. Um, sometimes through helping others, we help ourselves stay grounded and focused. Also consider joining a Walden student organization. Um, you'll find a list of organizations on the Student Affairs website, which you can access from your My Walden portal. And if you haven't um, already done so, join and engage in a professional association. Many professional associations are having virtual conferences where you can connect with other professionals. Um, you may want to consider taking on a leadership role in a professional association, such as helping with a conference or running for a board position. We strongly encourage you to belong to at least one professional association, if it's affordable for you. Um, be sure to check if the association offers a discounted student membership rate. And remember, when you meet new people, um, reach out and connect with them via LinkedIn. And finally, prepare for interviews. Research the organization to remind yourself of their top services, products, and mission. And reassess your qualifications for the job. Practice verbally sharing your accomplishments in short stories that highlight your qualifications. Um, prepare for common questions such as, why are you interested in this position? Practice using technology, as Katie mentioned, such as Zoom or Skype for virtual interviews. And be aware of your background. And remember to dress professionally, um, even though you're um, likely to be at home. Um, show enthusiasm and how you are an excellent fit for the job. And finally, don't forget to follow up by sending a thank you. The Career Services website has resources that will help you build your interview skills and confidence in all of these areas. Um, before we move on, I want to add that managing changes in employment can be emotional. I recently listened to the story of a woman who was laid off due to the pandemic after working for the same company for 20 years. She loved her job and the layoff was totally unexpected and devastating. She shared how she became stuck and had a very difficult time moving forward. She applied for over 40 jobs and she received no responses. Um, she said it was when she changed her mindset and started to focus on her future and what she wanted and reached out to her network for help in strategic ways that things started to change and she received two job offers that she was excited about. So if you're finding that you need support with emotional challenges, remember, as Katie mentioned earlier, um, there's the Walden Student Assistance Program and other resources for emotional well-being listed in the COVID-19 toolkit. And um, next, uh, let's review a few of the resources already mentioned and take a look at how you can get additional career support. Um, Drop-in advising sessions are great ways to connect with the Career Services staff. You can register for a drop-in advising session on the Career Services homepage and join us for these live events. Um, during drop-in advising, you'll be able to ask questions via text and receive career advice and resources. 
If you haven't done so already, log into Optimal Resume with your Walden credentials and start using robust um, career management tools in the system to build resumes, cover letters, career portfolios, and even practice mock interviewing skills, which is really helpful at this time. If you're seeking new opportunities, register on our two custom job and internship search systems, iGrad Job Search and Going Global, and connect with us on social media to stay engaged and informed. Career Services is on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, we also have a blog where we share career tips and student success stories, and it's really fun to read some of those success stories, and I think it'll be motivating for you. Um, finally, after utilizing our website resources, um, you may want to schedule a career advising appointment through your student portal, or you can email us at careerservices at mail.waldenu.edu for assistance, and um, we'll, we'll help you with the scheduling system. All of these resources and offerings, and a lot more, are available on the Career Services website. Remember, we're here to support you through your Walden program and beyond. Um, so next, I'm going to turn it back over to Angie for our final poll. Angie? Well, thank you, Denise. So we have mentioned many ways that you can take action uh, and get started as you plan your career management or your job search. So we would like to ask you, what action steps will you take next? And feel free to select all that apply. Will you be registering for drop-in advising, visiting the Career Services website, using Optimal Resume to uh, uh, update your resume and cover letter, looking for opportunities on going global or iGrad, Will you be joining the Career Services on LinkedIn? Let us know what is your next step. Okay, I'd like to share the results here. So it looks like a lot of you will be visiting the Career, the career Services website, taking advantage of going global, joining Career Services at LinkedIn. Um, using optimal resume and registering for uh, drop-in advising. And of course, we hope that you do all of the above. Now, let's open up the floor for questions. So we've already had a couple questions come in. So I'd like to uh, first direct the first question toward Dina. Um, Geraldo has a question. Are there Walden chapters by geographic location that could be useful to network with other um, students or alumni that could help with employment or research opportunities? Hi, Angie. That, this is a great question. I know alumni relations do have chapters in different parts of the country. So if you are an alumnus of Walden, looking into those chapters would be wonderful to connect to other alumni. If you are a current student, I would also recommend that you look into student organizations at Walden. Those are great ways to get involved, to hone in on your leadership skills, to make new connections, and also add to your resume or CV. Great question. Uh, Jasmine had a good question. What online software are HR professionals using for virtual interviews? And I think I can answer this one, Jasmine. I think you'll find that uh, HR professionals are using a variety of software. I would imagine a, a huge chunk of, of folks are going to be using Zoom for interviews. Um, some of them will be using Skype, and I think some of them will be using Teams. But of course, it really depends on the organization and really how prepared they were for uh, an incidence like that and how frequently they used virtual interview tools in the past. But I would say if you can get some level of comfort with Zoom or Skype, that would be very, very helpful to you. 
great question. Um, the next question is for Katie and it's from Jorge. Will we be able to access the career services after we graduate? Hi, Angie. Thank you. Um, that is a great question. Yes, absolutely. The Career Services website is a public website, so you will always have access to it. Um, to find the Career Services website, you just need to type in careercenter.waldenu.edu, and you'll find it. Great. Um, I'm going to direct the next question to Denise. Uh, Carly has a question. She's graduating with her PhD in healthcare administration. Congratulations. Um, and she really wants to go into online education. She has some teaching experience. So what are some pointers to position herself for this kind of career change? Um, another great question. So the first thing would be to create a curriculum vita. And we have resources in the optimal resume system. We have some sample CVs there. Also in the career exploration tab, um, we have, uh, if she goes there and then clicks on doctoral resources, she'll see some archived webinars on searching for um, higher ed teaching positions as well. Um, so those would be some places to start with. Um, I would also add that, you know, to uh, try to leverage her dissertation to maybe give a presentation at a professional association or see if she can um, turn, you know, turn it into a um, journal article, maybe talk to her chair about, about doing that. And those would be things that she could put on her CV that would help make her more marketable um, as well. Um, but, you know, really a polished CV uh, would, would be one of the first places to start. Um, also, networking is incredibly important across all job searches. So thinking about, you know, if she uh, has the teaching experience, maybe reconnecting to people wherever, um, you know, sh she uh, had formally taught to see if there are any opportunities there. Um, you know, if she belongs to a professional association to look to see who else might be teaching and, uh, and connect with, with people there. Thank you so much, Denise. So um, Katie, Tom had a question. What are the best career exploration and job search resources if I want more information about how to find positions in my specific degree area? Great question, Tom. Um, if you look at our career services website, and there is a tab at the top for career exploration. There are a variety of resources that you'll find there. Many resources on doing in, um, field research, so looking at Career One Stop or ONET, which all pulls from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Those are great resources to do a little bit of research to see what's required for positions in, in that field as well as what are similar positions. That's always a great way to, to do some research and, and get a feel for what's out there. There's also a webinar on career exploration right there, as well as a great tool called What Can I Do With This Major that focuses on a variety of positions within different fields. So there's a lot there, and I highly encourage you to check out that career exploration tab on the website. Wonderful. Thank you, Katie. Uh, the next question is for Samuel, and this is for Dina. Uh, Samuel just graduated with a PhD in healthcare with a public health policy. Um, and congratulations on that, Samuel. Um, how do does he look for an adjunct position or a fellowship if he doesn't have any teaching experience? This is an excellent question, and we have many resources to help you get started in this area. Uh, first off, I would uh, visit the doctoral resources page, and Denise mentioned uh, that page that is accessible through the Career Services website. It is a one-stop page to help you prepare for careers uh, beyond academia. So. One area that would be helpful 
are the webinars that we have uh, related to doctoral career paths. We also hosted a conference a while back and there are uh, recordings for the doctoral career pathways conference and I would start there and take a look at the conference recordings because they will provide information on a variety of career paths including um, policy analysis and advocacy that might be helpful Regarding the fellowships, if you are interested in fellowships at Walden, navigate to the main Walden site at www.waldenu.edu. There is a tab there called Tuition and fi Financial Aid. And if you click there, you will be able to see a list of fellowships at Walden. Now beyond Walden, there is a great site out there called profellow.com, P-R-O-F-E-L-L-O-W.com. This is a great site for identifying fellowships all over the world, and they can be graduate fellowships, postdocs, and others. I would start there, and also you could use general search engines like Indeed.com or even go on LinkedIn and use the keyword fellowship or another keyword maybe fellow and opportunities uh, will pop up for you. So I hope that helps answer those questions. Yes, yeah, Samuel says thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you are very welcome. Um, and I have a question for Jasmine, and I'm not sure who would best answer this, but if one of you wants to chime in, how can I become a peer reviewer? And this is Dina, I can step in. Uh, and peer reviewed journals are available out there. Uh, that would be the first step, would be to contact those journals and see if there are opportunities to work or serve as a peer reviewer for those uh, journals. So I would start with identifying what journals are available in your area of interest and field and reach out to them. Uh, and also I would speak with your faculty because they may have other ideas of how you can take on this role and we'll be able to give you more feedback and direction. That is perfect. Thank you, Dina. Mm -hmm. Well, these were amazing questions. Thank you so much for your participation. So I'm actually going to hand it back to Dina to conclude the program. Thank you, Angie, and thank you, everyone. And we would like to leave you on the, these, with these final thoughts from author Gregory Williams. On the other side of a storm is the strength that comes from having navigated through it. Raise your sail and begin. And we want to thank you for attending the session here today. We also wish you and your loved ones health and well-being in upcoming months and years. Enjoy your evening, everyone, and thank you again for attending our program.